but I'm done. And I will give back to the If you have no problem, you're at 90 foot, your knee so that you're in Govkasa. All right, when you're in Govkasa, I play the Trinity, so be very careful because it's going to shorten your square level. You might want to be a bit longer, okay? So this is just to organize hand, hand, knee, knee, foot, foot. So you have two Trinities. Third Trinity would be hand, hand, eye. Equilateral triangle in front of you. So the first trick is really just measure up, organize yourself, put yourself in a frame that really can hold up. Then when you're ready, inhale, suck it up. Exhale, suck everything up. Every time you inhale, you suck up. Every time you exhale, you stick out. Every time you inhale, your navel's to your back. Every time you exhale, your ass and your head come up. So find a rhythm, make it nice and easy initially. The goal is not to really have to go fast initially, it's really just to find the form. Know that you're designing the pattern. Arch of the foot is the arch of the groin, is the arch of the spine, is the arch of the neck, is the arch of the elbows, is the arch of the palm, is the arch of the palate, is the arch of the brain. So when all your arches start arching in unison, you start to build the super wave. All surfers know you don't jump waves. You take one wave and you ride it in. So you find the crest and you find the fall. So find it with the breath. Just know as you're inhaling and as you're exhaling, your actors start to adjust the wave of fluid to your body. Know that bones are 80% water, they're very malleable. They bow, they bend, they straighten. So the first piece of this is to really just organize your bones so that they have a real fluency that they work together. Organize your breath so that you know that when you ride wave, you're really riding the wave of the breath. Know that bones are very fluid with water, so the minute you're breathing at the same time that you're moving, you start to pump a lot of minerals in these bones so that you can make the bones strong. If you keep the bones at 90 as you're doing this, you flush the bones. And that's why you don't flush your toilet when it doesn't have the pressure. And 90 will build the pressure that you get a good flush. So now that you know what you're doing, start to speed up, right? So the artists know you're on a bicycle, this is the 10 speed, and as you get comfortable, I'm not really looking for comfort, I'm looking to get you there very quickly. So it's almost like, oh, I need the heat. The easiest way to get the heat going is go faster. Now as you go faster and faster and faster, the trick is to annoy you. But the trick is also to keep you going through the whole thing. So don't go so fast that you forget to go in and out. But go fast enough that you are annoyed. Now, as you go faster and faster and faster, keep your arm at 2 o'clock, keep the liver jumping around in memory, that was it, Megan. Keep uh, putting yourself in the middle, and keep smiling away so that you know that if someone else is looking at you, you are happy to Take a nice deep breath, fill it up. Exhale, let go. Beautiful, switch to me on top, right? So this is where they're just generating heat. To get, uh, to get you out of all your thinking and what you're up to in the day, and to really keep going for you. So it kicks butt. Easiest way to kick butt is to make you rhythm and kick on all four. Nice way to kick butt is to start to undulate back and forth and up and down. So inhale, suck it up. Exhale, stick it out. So first, though, you just start to ride a bicycle. You start to go really quick. You have to get the momentum going. But once you're going, I get it, I'm riding, I pedal, I steer, I look around, I keep my ass on the road, and I remember my destination. Your destination is not in front of your face. The only thing in front of your face is another car, or another bicycle, or another person, or a building. And so it's very important to see that in front of your face. You always remember your destination is in time, and time is traveling. So that's why your heart travels to two, because in time your heart wants time to joy. And time is traveling from the heart side to the liver side, from the liver side, past the uh, bra line, back to the heart side. So dawn to dusk is from left to right. Dusk to dawn is from the right, all the way around the memories to the left. So you're almost ready, pump away, faster, 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 because most of you are riding on a six speed, and I want an eight speed. And if you can ride an eight speed, then of course I want a nine speed. So the goal is not to think you're ever going to get there, I'm just going to annoy you further. So if you go faster, then ask faster. If you go faster, then it's even faster. Until you go, yeah, enough of it. At which point, you know, you have enough heat going to your body. Take a nice deep breath, fill it up. Exhale, let go. <laughs> Sit up on your knees with your knees crisscrossed, don't cross them. Take your hands, either put them on two blocks, that's where Noah has purpose. Nope. Did we lose Noah? Nope. Where is our slave? <laughs> we lost slave Noah. When he comes back, we will use him. If he's not back, we won't use him. But if you have two blocks, you can put your fingertips on it and it'll give you something stable to stand with. If you don't need the blocks, make your hands into um, a tennis racket, knowing that every time you set up this hand, it is a vengeance that you have the cradle, that you're going to use for your headstand, that you're going to use for the pelvic floor, that you're going to use for your brachial places, and you're going to use to hold the crown. So take the hands if it's comfortable, put them behind your head so that you're a ball in a mitt. So the head becomes the baseball, the hands become the baseball mitt, and the elbows as balls 
go up to the ceiling. So make your elbows as balls look up to the ceiling. And when your elbow balls look up at the ceiling, well, your head ball can drop into the hands, which is good, which one out of the baseball mitt. You don't throw the mitt into the ball. You throw the ball into the mitt. Eyeballs and eye sockets are the exact same thing as the baseball and the baseball mitt. And that's why the better you organize one game, the better you're going to organize a lot of games. Because you're inside with a pattern, and the minute you put the salt in the water, it's in everything. The minute you organize one thing, it'll affect everything. So that's why when we wear shoes that fit, every piece of you is happier. When you wear shoes that don't fit, every piece of you freaks out. And that's when you don't want to freak out, you have to know little things. Like you're not freaking out because of the one thing, you're freaking out because the shoes are too small. You're freaking out because you didn't organize things well. So this is an organization game. Cubis is going forward for 12 o'clock. Amos is going back for 6 o'clock. Fire is rising up. Water is going down. Your elbows are balls. You throw them up to the ceiling. Your head is a ball. You're throwing it down into your hands. When you inhale, spring can rise. When you hold the breath, summer can ripen. When you exhale, art can send memories. And when you're empty, you can be in winter. Beautiful people. Bring it down. <clears throat> switch the legs so that you have the other leg on top. And as you have the other leg on top, switch the hands. So you can either do both hands flip, you can do one hand flip, you can do both hands straight, you can do both hands wet. Right? Each form has a slightly different function, but they're all very good for these poses because they will all build up your bones. If you get the arms at 90, if you look at the floor in front of you, now start to stir your pot by stirring back. So these two tricks are really just for me in a way. It is to organize the room. It is to guarantee that you're all on the same page. It is to really make sure that really we're all together. So when you stir, it gives you an opportunity in a sense to get around yourself, right, to make sure you have your fluency and to hear what is going on around you. Hearing is stereophonic. Hearing is predicated on the kidneys, your adrenal glands. The portal to hearing is your ears. And that's why when you hear properly, it is round sound. And that's why lots of times you hear things that are true, but it's not your business. Because the big trick is to know where are you? What are you listening to? What should you be listening to? And that's why one trick to know in yoga is that there's a lot of truths. That's how it's about. It is where are you? Where are you going? What are you listening to? And what should you be listening to? So it's been in the other way. That's why the first goal of yoga is the siddhas, the powers. The first powers are very pragmatic. Can you see? Can you hear? Can you smell? Can you articulate? Can you get out of your way? Can you get in your way? Can you know what you're paying attention to? If you're hearing a lot of traffic on 3rd Avenue, you're stuck in traffic, you're supposed to be on 5th Avenue, hmm? you made a mistake, mm -hmm. right? So it's true that the traffic's there, but that's not what it's about. So that's why we're always playing, well, where are you? Where are you trying to get? So now go back and forth and kick butt, up and down. So for two more minutes, this is all you're doing. You're either kicking butt, and when you're kicking butt, kick your butt. If you don't kick your butt, somebody else will kick your butt. If you kick your butt, it'll move the heat. You have three sources in your body. Here's the blind, here's the heart, here's the imagination. Because he buys this, you have to know how to play the game. If you can move the heat from the groin and you move it up through you, where's the start? Moving through your kidneys, your water. So now it's through your pot. So you know you got a nice pot, and it's got a lot of liquid in it, and you have water, and you have fire under it. Well, put fire under water, you should get steam. If you're not hot and steamy enough, well, turn on the heat. Right? Go harder. How to go harder? Go faster. Right? Because everything is can you play the game? Can you generate heat when you need it? Can you get cool when you need it? Can you hear what you're listening to? Can you let go of what you're listening to? Right? And that's why it doesn't have to be right or wrong. It is to be powerful enough to use your game to your advantage. So kick butt. You're almost done. Kick butt. Right? And as you kick butt, you kick the butt. In, out, in, out. And if you really want to go drive the peloton, you know that the one with the yellow shirt is going to be blind. Because nobody kicks butt faster than blind. So you know he's going to get up that mountain really quick. So you know you're competing with it. Right, he is in front of you. Now stir your butt. Right, because when you stir your butt, you're rolling wheels, and when you're rolling wheels, you're gonna get someplace. And that's what the job of your kidneys is rolling your wheels. So when you lose your kidneys, you lose your sense that you can be mobile, that you can get around, that you can kick your butt. You can stir the other way. Right, and then you're almost done because now you're all stirred up, got a good kick butt. Right, everybody's out of their own ways, and that's where we start. So now you take a nice deep breath. Exhale, hug your legs, break yourself into a hand. So go on to your feet, walk your hands to your feet, and once you get into a hand, you're, you know, you're not standing on the hands, only the legs, bend the knees slightly, shift your weight back and forth, put your palms on the floor, and pretend you're a rocking chair, okay? 
If you can't touch the floor, just keep bending your knees so you can. Because knees are conjunctions and they're designed to be bendable. And the big trick of this practice is use the universe to your advantage. If you die in nature, generally it is your fault. Actually, it's always your problem, but it's also your fault. Because nature always gives you an out. It tells you water goes down, so you get trapped in an avalanche, spit, and you'll know which direction to go. Fire always goes up, right? Uh, the tide always goes in and out, so if you hear the tide go out and it doesn't come back in, run for the hills, right? Because nature tells you enough stuff that your job is to know how to use the language of nature to your advantage. So now sway back and forth like you're in a little rocking chair. When you put your palms on the floor, think the earth is a giant hot griddle, think your hands are a pancake, rather than mushing the pancake on the griddle, go for the rise. So all of a sudden you use your mind, the levity of your imagination, to lighten up the pancake. And that's why it's by virtue of the intellect that you actually play a lot of the calibration. The breath is to really feed the game, but the mind is to direct the game. Right? The better the mind is in syncopation with the breath, the better chance that your breath and your mind together will get you where you want to go. The, tra the territory is your body. So you have to know, ah, you have to really use this body because without it, you don't have a breath and the mind that can integrate. They are dependent on the body in order to keep themselves together. So keep the knees mm -hmm. bent slightly, keep the hands on the floor because you don't get the pancakes off the griddle. You just let the surface tension give the rise. Shift your weight back into the heel and dig it. Just stay there for a moment. Feel what it feels like to dig in your gym. Right? Because to me, although these practices are experiential, we're not looking for it to be academic. We're really looking to experience what it feels like to be stuck in your heels, to dig in, to be behind a curve, to put on your brakes. Right? So if people never know how to do that, eventually they don't know that it's available. But if you always do that, you can say, oh, I know this feeling. It's incredibly comfortable. I'm sitting on my heels, my calves are thick, my butt is a little large, and my brain is stupid. That's the trick. We're definitely done. Now, feel what it feels like to be a tiptoe walker. You shift your weight forwards, Put the weight mainly in the ball of the feet, and all of a sudden it's very risky and you're gonna need your hands more. In life, when you go forward, you always need to handle things more. And that's why when you shift back in the brakes, you don't need that much competency. When you go forward into your future, well, you better develop better technique for the hands. So now go back and forth like a rocking chair, right? Just so that you can keep out of the right here. Just so you can keep calibrating that when you're in the heels, you're in the past, when you're in the toes, you're in your future, and when you're in the arch, you're in the present. Present becomes a memory, memories push you forward, you become, you find the center, and then you become reflective again. So the goal is to be revolutionary. You never go stout. I think the first thing I was taught, I was taught my yoga practices 40 years ago was that um, a helicopter doesn't hover if you turn off the engine. Right? And that's the big trick. You can't stand the bicycle, you're not constantly pedaling, steering, looking around. So keep pedaling, keep bending, keep breathing, keep dealing, because life is hard. But the game is built with enough technique that it becomes fun. The biggest difference between terror and joy is always technical. So if you're a lousy swimmer, it is terrifying to be in the pool. If you're a great swimmer, it is great joy. We always say if you don't like something, it's because you're not good at it. Right? So that's a nice criteria rather than think that it doesn't have merit. Generally, if you don't like to swim, it's because you're a lousy swimmer. If you don't like to ski, you're a lousy skier. If you don't like to read, you're a lousy reader. So the merit is really in technique. Become a good skier, all of a sudden you go, oh, I like the sport. And that's why life, you will like life if you have good technique. Otherwise, it is terrifying. Bend the knees slightly, but walk your fingers forward. Don't put any weight on it, so look out. But you can go up on the ball of the feet so it's even lighter, and then walk your over to the wall. And as you walk your over to the right, keep your pubis lined up. Keep your pubis lined up with the wall in front of you. Keep your aim is lined up with the wall behind you. And then stretch around the kidney so you can reach out to the, to the side. As you go out to the right, with your arms like steering wheel, you're rotating to the right, but you're still driving into the potential. Beautiful, right? So the front body is your future, back bend. The back body is your past, moving towards your ass. Right, your knees stay parallel because really they're the eyeballs that are looking what's in front of it. Right, the potential's in front to the right, so even your knees, very sneaky, always know that eventually they're going right. Because when you want to unravel, screw the screw to the left. When you want to hold up, screw the screw to the right. Bring it back in the middle and go left. But of course the big joke is when you go left, keep the knees going right. <laughs> right, because it's only, you know, the upper body check, well, what's out there for me on the left? Well, the heart starts on the left but it is really the liver that travels around memory that brings you to the left. So the goal is to be revolutionary. Know that the heart is sitting by going out. 
know that livers reflect by getting around memory. And that's why the liver and the eyes are organs of reflection, but the heart is an organ of desire. What is out there for me? Well, your future is always on the right, right? And that's why your heart never goes to left field. It is the way to damage your heart and eventually end up in the ditch. And that's why hearts sing to the audience. The audience is always to the right of you. Come back to the middle and put your hands under your feet. Now, this piece is to really just organize your nature, to really know certain things that are really the universal laws. After spring, there's always summer. Summer is always hot. Your autumn starts to diminish your spring events, you can't have the vision. 
If your spring is so overwhelmingly potent that you can't reflect, well, eventually it's going to diminish you the other way. And that's why your job is to hold the center and mediate the whole game. You know how to rise up, know how to go down, know how to go forward, know how to climb back, and know how to play the side. Take a nice deep breath, fill it all up. Hold your breath with the pregnant pause so that it's female, bring your arms down, bring your chin to the throat, and nice and easy as you exhale, stretch work your way down. Every time you inhale, stop for a moment and get a pregnant pause. When you're pregnant, that is a really nice moment to really find your balance. So you're going to heels, find the toes, with the toes, find the heel, and then mediate by really going the bridge, which is the arch. Every time you exhale, you have more momentum, right? So it'll get you down further. Bend knees, because knees are conjunctions, and knees don't care. Now, if you want to be able to stay with something for hours, you have to know how to add the and. Because the more time you get to conjunction, the longer the sentence can be. So when I want to run on sentence, I just keep bending my knees and saying, and, and I'm not done. And I can do some more. And so it's very important to know how to be bendable and pliant and available and fluid and the whole thing. Once you're down, your fingertips on the floor. With your fingertips on the floor again, bend the knees slightly. Walk your fingertips forward. Don't put any weight on the hands so that it's only for the long knee going out. Use your front body and see your long knee going out. So you never drive the car with your back. You drive with your front. And that's why even in a forward bend, there's always a back bend. Because it shows me looking out as you're going in. Take your hands, walk it to the right. And as you go to the right, which is the side of the of the drishti of where your heart wants to look, keep your hips level, keep your knees parallel, and then use the breath, right, to really play the form. Form and form slow, flow deepens form. The more you go out to the right, the more you open up the left kidney. So if your kidneys are rigid or stiff, you make them flying by really stretching. And that's why round sound is the game of acoustics. And when you're rigid, you don't get that circumstantial um, ability to hear things. Come back to the middle and go to the left. And when you go to the left, still the knees are pointing forward to actually get them forward because the heart's on the left. I think both knees are pointing to two o'clock slide. That's it. Isn't that interesting, Laurie? Right? Puts you right in the middle. Because you always ski to your toy. So the knees should know you're actually skiing in time, right? Even though you're seeing what's going on on the left. Left is the inception. It's where you start in the morning. It is where the heart begins. It is where the liver is traveled around the night and eventually it becomes the fuel for the fire so that the heart can sing out into its joy. Come back to the middle and one more time, play in the middle feet. Okay? So this is just a reductive game initially to make you deal, to teach you how to build your stamina, to use your hand, uh, feet instead of your arms. Because being more confident will really not make you safer. Right? Safety is safety. Uh, I should say kicking is kicking and stroking is stroking. Stroking is never kicking. And that's why if you stroke really well, then you break your arms because you didn't kick. If you kick real well, you break your legs because you forgot to stroke. If you can stroke and breathe, you get a good chance to keep your head up. Take your hands one last time under your heels. And when you take the hands under the heels, shake the hand like the mitt, shake the heel like the ball, and go for the The bit that is in the heels, then separate the knees and the knees slightly, so that they're parallel. forwards, forwards, and keep coming up, up, up. And when you can't come up anymore, 
at the time. Yeah, that's what you want that to look. Yeah, stay in more your first one you get it, okay? Um, when you fold in half, you fold in like paper. You get two fronts, you get two backs. But anything that's animate falls in thirds because you fold front, back, back, front, 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 front. Okay? So thirds, folding in thirds is much more interesting than folding in half. Because paper falls in half. But why things fit? Right? Front, back, back, front. So a beginner pose has no leverage. So we're not going to do beginner, just going to show you the set stuff. The beginner pose is Bukitasa with the arms straight. The problem is that all you're being asked to do is make effort hold it all together. It's exhausting if you want. More advanced pose is more technique. It's more leverage. So you always know it's more advanced when there's more folds in the pose. Yeah. And that's what origami, I always know the first origami fold is maybe one fold, two fold. Right? So there's this great origami master who made a porcupine, and someone said, I want you to take your name, he said, 40 years. Right? Because every year he had more folds until we could make that shit. Right? So you have to know it's a precision game to fold joints such a way that the first fold orients you so you can do the second fold. Second fold orients you so you can do the third fold. The elbows of all the hands in that fit. If they fit your elbows, you can fly something. Okay? If they fit, when you go up and down, you're able to fit inside the frame because you're designed to fit. If it doesn't fit, you're not framing up well. It means your armpits are tight or the elbows are all really neck is distended. And that's why the fits don't mind. But the distortion is really how you organize yourself. The universe organizes very well. It designs things so that tongues fit the mouth. Eyeballs fit the eye socket. Right? And eventually, Oh, those three things. Okay? So inhale, lift it all the way up. When you're ready, then exhale, bend, 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 knees, and knees, and knees, and knees, the gas up, chest up. Make sure you see where you're going. Ah, stop, stop, stop. Alex's is the best. Okay? If it's a stop, stop, can you see where you're going? Ah, ah, stop, can you see where you're going? Look out, look out, look out. If you can't see where you're going, you might get it by car. I would look out. But like, is your weight forwards, 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 otherwise your brakes are on. Are your knees pointing to two because you know your future's over there, not over there. Beautiful. Then put the chest on the thighs. Oh, thank God. Oh, don't unbend the knees. Put the knees in the armpits because you don't unbend the ball from the mid. You throw the ball into the mid. Then put the hands under the heels, right? So be very sneaky. Now you should have a lot of sneaky things going on, right? Your feet should be parallel. Your knees should be in your armpits. Your hands should be with your heels. Don't let your chest leave your thighs, and not cantilever. As you work your head down, work your butt up. Absolutely beautiful. And you're be ready to come out, bend your knees, keep your chest on your thighs. Once you're halfway there, lock your elbows together, and then use the elbows to get you up. You beautiful. And then the shove both these point to two. Ah, oh, that's the middle. Right? Because it's sneaky. Remember, eyeballs use the round. So in a sense, you have to really direct where they want to go. And that's why you never shoot the arrow straight. You shoot it knowing that the wind is going to move it in time. Okay? Good. We're going all the way up. Okay, one more time. Right? Switch the elbow. These are very demanding poses. You don't even do the whole form. It is good enough to just kind of go up and down to it. It is the easiest way to open the windows. So if you have too much heat in the heart, you can't open up the window. If you open the windows, you have a lot of heat in the heart because the fire needs the windows. Right? So every time you open this up, you really just take your You also frame yourself so that you're in the middle of the picture. Right? And that's what the good is you in the middle. Okay? Then when you're ready, take a nice deep breath. You open as much as you can, and then you fold. And you fold. And you fold. And the goal is not to rip the paper, not to torque the paper, not to pull the paper. It is to fold it so that with precision your corners meet. Once you're well folded, beautiful corners meet for put the chest on the thumbs. Put the knee caps in the armpits. Now, eventually, the real trick is to throw the ball into the mitt. So there's the knees that get thrown into the armpits more than the idea that the armpit gets thrown into the knees. Then put the hands under the heel, and then can't believe it. Pubis down, anus up, or big punch on tenacity. They never like that. It's so really hard. And then when you're ready to come down, you bend, you bend, you bend, you lock the elbows, and then you take advantage that the elbows can be used to lever you up. And that's why the beginning poses, you don't have a lever. But the more advanced poses, there's a lever. And that's why in life, it is always easier when you're advanced. Right? And in the funny way, that's the killer. Because in advanced, oh, it's so easy to ski, and the beginner is peeing in their pants. Because it's not easy until you have good enough technique. How do you develop technique? It is technical, and it is redundant. Do it again, do it again, and again. And each time you refine the information, till eventually it gets you what you want. 
neck. One arm out of right angle, the other one underneath. Right? The wrist is the neck, so hold on to the neck. Okay? So grab the hold on this way, hold on to the neck. Okay? You have five necks in your body. Neck of the wrist, which is the neck of the hands. Right, the ankle, neck of the foot. And the neck, neck of the head, they're all the same. You have a bottom neck in your neck, you have a bottom neck in your neck. You have a bottom neck in your hands in your neck, you have a bottom neck in your foot. When you put salt in the water, it's in everything. Right? When you want to know what a cake tastes like, get a slice. If everybody ate every slice, get a crumb. <laughs> Come to the oh, the whole cake business. Right? Because you're a of you, and it's a fractal, and you're whole, and you have integrity, and you are one by yourself. On the other hand, you are totally dependent on a bubble moon. Okay? Make the hand into a fist, because remember we said when you make it into a fist, you make a nail, make it punchy. Anytime you need to punch, take a fist. Anytime you need to be receptive, be the holy girl, take the cup. Right? It is not gender-based in the sense that one is one, one male, just that everybody has both in, because everybody can make a fist and we can make a cup. Third root has no gender. Right? Souls are genderless. They are the engendering root, and they allow you to manipulate all the other genders in you. Make a nice fist, inhale, from your elbows out, Exhale, do back bend, get your elbows up, punch the wall with a hand behind you. Inhale, get your elbows even higher. Exhale, push back. And now inhale, even higher. And then when you exhale, bend your knees, stick your ass out, and fold. Right? So you bend, 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 you bend. You put your chest on your thighs, you put your kneecaps in your armpits. Right? Now you don't uncross your hands, just hold on to your ankles, crisscross. Then you can pull your elbows away from each other, and that will open up your collarbones. Then when you want a cantilever, head goes down, the S goes up, and voila, Pachimottanasana, Fukutatsi. Once you let it come out, bend your knees like crazy, lock those elbows in. Now remember, you have a lot of leverage. No, it's the Domukasana lock. Right, but it doesn't matter. Now use the elbows. Use the elbows to get up, because it's like opening up a, a soda bottle by using... Um, it's called tap. Yes, thank you. <laughs> As opposed to the first group. Beautiful. So good. So good last time. So you switch the hand. Right? You make sure you play the grip. Because this wrist work is exactly the same thing as your in the hips. It is the same thing as over the collarbone. Your wrist joint is a mini version of your collarbone. So if you ever damage your collarbone, your wrist is wrong. If you ever damage your wrist, your collarbone is wrong. But if the button, if you like damage the coat and you repair it in a certain way, the button might not fit the buttonhole. Right? Because the design game is set up. Your, uh, your job is just don't mangle the design. You know, use the design to your advantage because the universe designs you very well. It designs you to fit you. You might not fit somebody else, but you fit you. So the first contract is always fit yourself. Fit your tongue and your mouth. Fit your eyeballs and your eyes on. Right? Then later you can fit somebody else. But if you don't fit you, it's very hard to fit the next person. And that's what you know is about fitting. Right? But it's really about fitting yourself. Okay. So make a fist, inhale, lift it up, exhale, back bend, inhale, go all the way up, and then when exhale, you fold, and you fold, and you fold, and you fold, and you fold, ass sticks out, knees are bent, stick your chest out, stick your ass out, keep your weight forwards, 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 that's all the stuff, forwards, 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 bend the knees deeper, 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 Alex, easiest way to bend the knees deeper is to go the knee balls to the wrong front view. That does it every time. Then think that both knees are skinned to two o'clock. And then they'll be straight, perfect. Then put the chest right on top of the thighs, and you get right into the armpits. Now keep your arms crisscross and lock those elbows, pull the elbows out. Some of you like to fold these, you can fold all the way down, right? So if you know how to fold this all the way down, you keep your knee gets in your armpits, and then you fold your butt down, and you stick your chest out. Oh, uh, yes, oh, that knee is not in the armpit. I can tell, <laughs> right? And once it's in the armpit, then you have to bring both these to two o'clock, and that'll open up the collarbone and they'll take it all out of the heart. So make your knees take your armpits to two o'clock. And then you can go up and down, and all of a sudden you are very compact. Right? It's shocking, and you are designed to really fit yourself. Right? So real yoga is not about being a soldier, it's about being dumpy. It is about being able to fold yourself into a joint and fold yourself out of there. Right? To be able to deal and to be able to unravel. Absolutely. Let it go. Okay, let's add one more piece. Stay down for a minute. Bring your feet together so we have one giant foot. Let go of one giant foot, make your knees that tennis racket. The most important thing when you're playing with the webs is don't lose the pinky. Right? So if you notice that you're unraveling the pinkies, tighten that up the most. Right? So better to unravel on the first finger than to unravel the pinky. Then turn the palms down and get the thumbs with your little toe. 
Right. So the little dough is always the heart. The duck is always the liver. And for that, you're designed that the liver and the heart circulate around each other. Bring the feet to knees together. Because if your knees are together, right, it's going to be much easier to be able to hold this. Beautiful. So your design of the can of proportion, your design to fit. The same fit that your hands are going to fit your headstand is the fit of your hands fit in your feet. Now take your hand, let go, put them behind your heels, and do the same fit. Right? So just put them behind your legs, same fit, then bend your knees and stand on your knees. So you've got to lift your heels up, and you've got to put your hands under your heels. Okay? So now if you can stand on those hands, keep the knees together, you're nice and tight, fold all the way down. And as you fold all the way down, look out. So you can see, knees one to two. Ah, isn't that amazing? All right, so the ones who you know, can do it, fold all the way down, let the other seat and fold it all the way down. Knees together, knees together, knees, because if you don't keep the knees together, you'll have to extend your arms. Give your palms down or Ah, uh, palms down, right? Because what you're doing is you're opening up your back. Okay. With the uh, palms, with the bottom of your foot, you're opening up the back of your hands. And that's why it's like this. No, no, the difference is because really what you want to do is open up the back. So now you go up and down that way. And the trick is never go so far that you move the palms. You only want to go that far now. Keep pointing to 2 o'clock uh, with those knees, uh, because it's a trick. You don't really ski straight. You ski tipping your way in the direction you want to go. You never swim straight. You keep a sight line, right? Because straight, you end up in the middle of the ocean. Straight is overrated, right? You never drive straight. You drive straight to your destination, make sure you don't have to go easy places, right? So it is not a game of straight and wrong. It is straight to your destination as a skill, right? So where's your destination in time? Time is traveling. Well, beautiful people, let it go, take a dog pose, and you're ready to go. <laughs> so let's take a dog because there's so much to do and I want to make sure I get a lot of it with you. So take a dog, first thing I'd like to say a dog is not a soul. If you're going to be a dog, go for a walk. But if your dog can't walk, panic. What? I would panic if I had a dog and couldn't take a walk. If you're involved with an archetype, your orthopedic better measure up. Right. So when you're talking about bagels, put cream cheese on it. Don't put toothpaste on it. When you're talking about dogs, don't be a table. Tables are static. They're great for the meal. Dogs are dynamic. They're great for um, mobility and for friendships. So here's how you walk a dog. You can bend your legs, switch your weight from foot to foot like you're pedaling. You can switch your weight from hand to hand so that you're not static. The whole game is to know dogs have mobility as well as stability. I'm still your spot for a minute. Anytime a dog walks, it always keeps three points of contact on the floor. So take the right hand, put it on your back. Bend both legs at the knees and stretch away from the palm that's on the floor. Remember that the hand is the point in the socket, the wrist is the bend. The line is the away from the palm. And that's how you sort of organize yourself to know that these are nets. Because you get a bottleneck if you take your shoulder into your hand. You get a good currency if you're plugged in and then you can stretch the blood to bring it to your clients. Switch hands if you need. Okay? Anytime you're on one hand, you're on one lung. Easiest way to strengthen the lungs is to do the weight bearing pose on the hand. If your weight is on the right hand, you're playing more with the lung in the liver. If your weight is on the left hand, you're playing more with the lung in the heart. If you're on the pinky side of either hand, you're in the heart. If you put the weight mainly on the gun side, down the first finger, well, you're putting it on the hitchhiker. I can take it out. So there's a big trick to know, you always want to be taking it out because you're starting from the heart being in and it's always looking for the out. Switch hands. Yeah. So that one hand is the one lung. Once you have it on the one hand, come forwards into one hand plank. A one hand plank is 90 degrees on the joint. So it is the exact thing as Vajisthasana or Banatsadha. It is the same thing as when you do the tabletop. Where's the gun? Here and here. That's it. From the first one. Because you see otherwise you'll start to overwork the joint. Okay? And that's why it's not work hard only. It's being incredibly efficient. Being very sleepy. Know something other people don't know. Back bend, back bend, back bend. That's what it's doing to you. Because if you back bend, you stick your chest out, the heat will come out of you. Beautiful. Put both hands back on the floor, switch back into your dog pose. A nice one to get a lot of range for your joints. Take your right foot, walk it in an inch. Take your left foot, no, right foot. Walk your right foot in an inch, and then take your left leg up in the air. If you have a wall behind you, walk yourself to the wall, right, and then put the other foot down, and then 
bend the leg of the foot you're standing on, hop closer if you want, hop your hands close to the wall, and all of a sudden you're setting yourself up for a fine moment. Cheerleader split, Hanumanasana. Now back bend, right? Yes, back bend, bend the knees and back bend. You can always look out. Never drop your car staring down, right? Plus if you look at your knee, your knee is your back. So you be driving, you know, looking at the rear view mirror, right? So that's why you don't look at your knee in these poses, you look out. If anything wants to look forwards, the back of your knee is in front. It can look to the wall, but the front of the kneecap is a wall. It throws forwards. You got it. Now this is known as Hanumanasana, right? Cheerleader split. The knee that is on the floor, turn it to two o'clock. Turn that knee out to two. That's it, OC. That'll take a lot of pressure off of the whole Right, so as the knee collapses in, you're gonna play the shoulders too hard. As the knee goes out, it's gonna give you the boundary for that arm to feel well. Beautiful, breathe down, switch out, switch side. So if we were doing a class that was just based on the walls, right, I could give you two hours from that pose to build up a whole wall practice. Because once you're in any sort of geometry, or any measure of math, you can open it up. So once you know you're on the two table, where you have two times one, two times two, two times three, two times four, then you can flip it four times two, four times three, four times four, four times five, you can flip it five times more. So this post opens up to a lot of postures on the wall. But we're not doing it, right? Only because we need a lot of wall and a lot of people to help you find these postures, right? But the ones who know these, they know this how you open the groin. If uh, you have prostate issues, if your fire is going out, you're going to get air. Because a fire does not make a fire, it is air, it is fuel, and it is really knowing how to be vigilant and contain it in its channel. Beautiful, bring it back to your dumb bus. So pretty. Right. So then you will like watch all the variations. It's so beautiful to see them done Okay. But really the trick is to know if you need to dance one, eventually you can have the one. It is when you screw up one form that you get caught in. Make three times two out of seven. Three times three is never happening. And that's why the measure is in the magic, or the magic is in the measure. Bring it back to a dog pose, stretch it out, and let's keep moving this through. How do you measure the dog pose? You do the cross reference. So take the right hand, cross it over to the left foot, then you're on the outside, then your knees like crazy so you can grab the heel. Right, so now we're going to get a ball Now we start straightening the knees, you are going to return. Right, and this is how you straighten the bow instead of sight, shooting out. Because you need tension, you need sight, and you really need um, the, the handling of it. Beautiful. So if you work the heel down, it stretches you out further. Ah, oh, not great. Then if both your knees are they're going to two o'clock, you don't have to step the heart at the same time. Go to the other side. And that's why eventually it is very sneaky to get what you want. Right? One of my favorite games, the idea that the biggest difference between luck and magic is always technique. It is technical. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. But magicians are never guessing. Magicians know how to pull the rabbit out of the hat because they have the technique. The best part of the technique is it's a real rabbit. They've been hiding it. Right? So nobody pulls the rabbit out of the hat that is not real. Right? They didn't just make the rabbit, they had the rabbit. And they knew how to hide the rabbit and pull it out at the right time. Bring it back to a dog. So pretty people. Take your dog goes forward into a plank that is 90 degrees, right? 90 degrees as a plank is always a right angle in the joints. Okay? Once you hit 90 in the joints, that's not that 90. Knee forward. Oh, no, oh, damn, that's so much harder. Right? Because whatever it is, you go, really? That's 90? And I say, yes, I can, I can prove them. Bring it back into a dog. So dogs are 60s, plants are 90s, upper dogs are 120. So take it out. Right? So go past it. Now when you go to 120, keep the heels going back. Keep the heels going back. Don't go so deep that you sink. So it's actually, it's going to be a fairly high thumb. That's it. So take it up and down a couple of times. Right? And as you take it up and down, it is so organizing you to know that there are boundaries in all these poses. Because then you go, oh, I didn't know I didn't have to go lower than that, right? When you walk a plank, it is not a slope, it is a straight line. But right? that's it, so it actually it's good. Bring back to dog pose, let's open these up. Take a dog pose, come forward, flip just the right hand. When you put the right hand, stir it. Okay, so another trick for people who know these practices as well. Brian is doing it with the feet on a block, so he's changing the degree 
right, for the neck, for the shoulder, for the range. Because eventually, you can ride a bicycle uphill, you can ride a bicycle downhill, you can ride a bicycle on a flat slope. Like, each one is slightly different, but you're still riding the bicycle. So the most important thing is don't keep, don't stop pedaling, don't stop steering, don't stop moving around, but change gears, right? If you're gonna be playing going downhill, it's a slightly different game. Uphill, slightly different game, beautiful. Stir it around. Once it's well blended, switch hands. Okay, it's just very demanding. It is very important to know how to open up these joints because eventually if you have a bottleneck, it's always in the neck and the wrist is the neck of the hand. So stir that neck, right? And as you stir that neck, it's all the way around. And as you stir and get all around, look out at me. Yes, because in life, always look out. You're not looking out, you're not going to see the car come when it hits you, and then it's your problem. And that's why young is all about no fault insurance. Even if it's not your fault, it is your problem. And that's why the universe really doesn't care if you have a problem. You care, right? So that's why the investment of these practices is your techniques. The universe is very generous. Right? It gives you eyes and ears and senses so that hopefully you see it coming, you hear it coming, you sniff it out. But if you don't, it is your problem. Because the universe is very generous and gave you technique. Flip your hands. And that's why all you're doing in these practices is upping technique, developing your siddhas. The first siddhas of yoga are very common. Can you see, can you hear, can you smell, can you articulate? More nuanced siddhas. Can you make time go quickly when you hate what you're doing? Can you make time go slowly when you love what you're doing? Can you make yourself smell like a rose when you need to? Can you make yourself insignificant when you don't want anybody to know you're there? Can you make yourself significant when you want everyone to know you're there? Oh, that is the game. It is not be a good soldier and march. It is use your sensibilities and power your game up. Then, not only be sensible, but find virtue, because virtue is very sensible. Okay? So flip the hands now back and forth so they have nice flippancy. Oh no, on the floor, that was really fine. Right. <laughs> right, that's a different one. We do that one too. That's in the Koreans. <laughs> right. And once you flip both hands the wrong way, right, the first variation when they're flipped the wrong way is now walk your feet enough that you have four corners of hand, hand, foot, foot. Right. And because they've been flipped a little uh, further away with the feet. Right, uh, right. Once they've been flipped to so you out of the table this way, I can come in and look and see how you're playing your wrist. And once I see how you're playing your wrist, well, this is the easy pose I know to give you a collarbone, right? And to open up the joints. So, OC, I'm gonna put you here in a minute because this is the one that's gonna free up the neck. Because as you spread out the collarbones, the neck is free. A neck does not damage your neck. A fire does not make a fire. Fuel, air, spark, makes the fires, right? Then, even the fire will go out if you don't keep adding the fuel and the air. And that's why once there's a big fire, well, you got spark going. So now you have to deal with the fuel. If it's dry, you're gonna have a ridiculous fire, right? So you have to know how to calibrate so that you can take the heat, so that you don't overwhelm your fire, but also that you know how to make a good fire, right? Absolutely. Right? So Second 
pose in this for season it now. Right? So if you have your dog pose, you want to walk your feet back and your hands flip. First game is just upward facing dog to downward facing dog. Right? If you can do that, then we up the ante, right? And we add the chatteranga in the downward dog. So this is a flip right, right pose. It is a beautiful pose because it pumps your bones, not your muscles. When you do a typical chatteranga, you're always going to play muscle. So you'll end up getting bulk. But muscle is like mud. In summer, it gets very heavy if you overplay your muscles. So in summer, you want to play bones because bones are water. And it's much nicer to pump water in the summer than to pump mud. And that's why it's a different practice, right, to play the flip because the flip is things that you move into water, not moving through to that beautiful. So you play these up and down because there's a lot of fun games. Let me show you this. So once you're in, this is as far as that goes. Then, walk this on that elbow. Because I know when you bend, so now you bend, then the elbow, then the elbow, then the elbow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's scary for me. But now the elbows are lined up with the rib cage. So now when she wants to come up, then when she wants to come down, then when she wants to come up. And all she's doing is pumping the joint. Well, you pump the joints, it's open windows, closed windows. You pump muscles, like, it's weight, right? Not pumping weight, you're pumping to open the joints, right? It's so good. So I was thinking about <coughs> So not go too deep. Like, Here's the Yes. You just set the boundary. When you walk plank, you're not walking a slide, you're walking a long. And that's why yeah. as the tires shift, when they go make you walk the plank, you fall. You don't slide, right? Because it's long, and that's what you have to know. It's not just a metaphor, right? Now, make sure you open to two. Ah, two over there. Ah, yes. Now when you go up, all the pressure's off the mark. That's it, right? Then when you go down, you keep the pressure off the mark. Then when you go up, you play the pressure off the mark. Because eventually, you can hurt yourself just as much during practice as heal yourself. Practice yoga doesn't fix any of us. The only thing that helps is insight. You get an insight, you might get something. If you don't have an insight, it doesn't matter what technique you're playing. But if you don't have to use your hammer, you can stuff your toe. And it's still the hammer. Right? And that's why poses are in cycle, they're tools. Right? You don't give away your practice to the tool. Right? You use the tool. Right? And that's how you know what tools are for. Turn the heart, turn the heart, turn the heart, turn the heart. Because the middle is not a feeling, it's the measure. Eventually, it takes a long time to feel the measure, as opposed to measure the feelings. Right? Measuring feelings are overrated. Right? What you really want to do is feel the real measure. How do you know if you should fit? Well, the measure. And then it's going to be like, oh, that's the feeling. That's because I'm used to this. Well, it's too tight. Well, that's why I'm feeling so But well, my whole life, I'm feeling used to this. So, yeah, we can, yes. We have not finished those joints yet. Right, so go back into a dog pose, stretch it out because I, you know, I'm going to do the same practice I gave this morning because I really want people to have the moon salutation. So I have to work us into it, okay? So take your dog pose, lunge your right foot forward, bend the back knee down, flip the same hand as the front one. Okay, so in the old day, the back knee is down, right? Then you flip the same hand as the front leg and just hang out here for a minute. So let me tell you some fun little things here. Your knee is pointing to 10, it's point to 2. Your heart is at, at is pointing there, John. Look how much can go that way. There again, right? Dawn is on the left, lunch is in the middle, dusk is on the right, midnight is your bra line. Well, from the bra line, get back around to dawn. That's it. Okay, the big trick of this pose, because I do get to teach in this practice for a minute. Okay. When you do this pose, oh, thank you. When you do this pose and you flip a hand, you didn't have to move, okay. right? And you flip the hand. When the hand hits 90 in the joint, and the way you know is you play the right angle. When you hit a right angle here, bend your knee and see as far as your knee goes. Wherever your kneecap ends up, that's where your heel belongs. Oh, uh, yes, true. Right? So you know you're marching the arm, you don't want to march fast. You want to march in unison. Because the ones that march slow are not marching your back. But the ones who march fast, the ones marching their back. So you have to know you lunch to measure, right? And that's why the measure is the right angle on the wrist will tell you where the knee goes, and it's the right angle from knee to ankle, 
and get to know her, right? So all of a sudden, he's gauged how far you should watch. Beautiful, okay? I like your foot in a half an inch, closer to the middle. Mm -hmm. Under, closer. yeah, that's it. Because you'll see, now you can get the needle point to two, and that'll take all the pressure off the heart, but the foot is like a pedal on the bicycle. If you have, oh, you're so tall, you have to move your foot close more, more now that you're on C or so tall. Okay, right there. So now you stay there, and now that knee has to turn to two of them. So if you come, now you move, and you all the pressure off the heart, and the one gets more air. Because you are used to not needing enough in the right one. So you got a great left one, you got a great center, and the heart is really smart, but you don't know demand that you get a little Feel that? All of a sudden, you get more air. If you have no problem with that, right, take the arm that is flipped and put it in the armpit. It's designed to fit there. Yeah. Okay, so the tricks to know, you can on your back foot, right, okay, put the weight a little toe because it'll give you a good spread. Keep the knees, both of them, though, they're sitting to two. Now, the armpit, and the knee gets a ball on the mid, same as your eye, on your eye socket. If you have dry eye, you have dry armpit. Right? If you don't have to rotate your kneecap, rotate your eyeball. Easiest way to rotate your eyeball, rotate your kneecap. If you want to see your eyeball pop, keep your butt. Uh, you know, you don't want your eyeball pop your eyeball, you make it pop in some place else. So it is really all the balls play together. Butt ball, knee ball, eyeball. You have a flaccid eye, you have a flaccid butt. You got to leave your knee. <laughs> Absolutely. No way you can work that way. Because you put salt in the water, it's in the water. You make the cake chocolate, you don't get the coconut tongue. Bendy, 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 bendy. <laughs> right, you got it. Now on you, it's very slight. I would bring your foot in an inch because the, pedals, the handle bars on the outside, the pedal is slightly on the inside, and the seat's in the middle. Then when it's there, both these points are there. Now when you come up, the big trick is do not unbend the knee. Do not unbend the knee. Just the elbows to go up, right? Because we did this pose. So don't unbend the knees. But right, keep the weight a little to the back foot. Now the elbow is up to the ceiling, and the hand touches the wall behind you. That's how you find it. Absolutely beautiful people. So inhale, spin is rising, bend deep, bend deep, bend deep, bend deep, bend deep, bend deep, bend deep. This will take all the heat out, because your neck is open, your front body is open. So I have to fool you to get the heat out before it comes right down. Knee down, put your abs in. Okay? So the first trick is you're the dog pose. Take it back. Once you have a nice dog pose, lunge one the pose. Remember, if you want short, lunge longer, right? If you want too long, lunge shorter. And that's what the biggest game in all practices, know yourself. I love that. <laughs> right? It's just, you really see eventually how, this is why math is magic, and the whole game is in play, and all this stuff is game theory. And game theory is very much about coding and playing with the codes. So once you know the code of a pose, then you can know how to use it to your advantage. But that's why it has to really have to measure up. And that's why you can't use your metaphors wrong, because eventually, then you can't depend on them to get you where you really want to go. Time is always traveling from east to west. Heart is on the east, it travels to the west. Get the knee in the armpit and rotate the joint. And as you rotate in there, it is so that eventually, now it's very cute when you're going, just so you know. <laughs> she has not rotated the ball in the mitt. She's just rotating around it. <laughs> but it's the ball that's doing the work. That's it. Oh, oh, yes, well you can spend 30 years not knowing that the store is down the street, which I have done. <laughs> which is why you don't see it, you don't see it. And, you know, you don't read the map, you don't read the map, you read the map, all of a sudden you find out the territory. Right? The goal eventually is to be able to read maps so well that you know things that aren't in front of your face. <laughs> well, I can get there. How do you know it's there? I can't see it. It's on the map. Right? And that's why map quest is a transcendental experience of yoga. Rise above the person, read the map, get back to the body, and travel to the right place. Okay? It is not drive hard. It is not drive fast, except, of course, if you're very late. Right? Or drive slow, which, of course, would be very good. Uh, if it's really a tough way to get the wrong time, so they get to try to beat everything. Like the elbows and breathing. So pretty sweet. Right? So the big trick is don't unfold. Oh, that is beautiful. Right? Don't unfold the thigh. Don't unfold the hip. Right? Because when you're coming up, it's origami. You're folding, unfolding, and you want to keep the precision of the joint that you have set up. 
right? So knees slightly knows two, heart knows it's going to find joy at two, liver is traveling out of the back and finding ten, and you put yourself in the middle of the home. Absolutely. Bring back to Yonder Scripture. Okay, let's make this a little harder to be taught. Because this is a sequence, and it's worth knowing to a little beginning, a little sequence on. Right? You come forward to your plan, and you look just the right now. Once you flipped it, you stir it. Now, this is not the first time, it's going, I got it, I got it, stir this joint. Stress it back so you have one hand that's acute and one hand that's obtuse. Right? Take your right foot, lunge it on that right hand. Okay? So now you've got a hammer and a nail. Flip the back foot to your bhujrasana, bend the front elbow, fit the front knee with the front shoulder, then you can come to the side and you'll hit your bhujrasana with your hand and your foot left. So often, you're always going to the same thing because that is beautiful. But you're upping the game because we are in the city under, right? Right? Now, just know that what you really want is the heart to look at two and for the front body to be able to turn. Now, this is the sneakiest bit, piece of it. Bend the elbow slightly so you don't want the elbow that you're using under your foot. And then don't let your arm push your knee away. Make your knee push your arm to the person in front of you. Doesn't need push arm, it's not push knee. You don't want the sail cloth to manipulate the rudder. You want the underground rudder to tell you where you're going. And where you're going is towards the person in front of you. Beautiful people. How do you bring it down? Flip the back foot, bring the front hand down, flip the back foot back to normal, flip the front foot back, right? Flip the front hand back, and now you're back. Okay? So if you follow the technique, right, you can fold the paper right. And you never descend the joints. So you come forward at 90, you flip just the left hand, beautiful. You stir it around. Why do you stir it? It is to really open up the joint. Is that you turn a key in a lock? You've got to really get all the way around it. Get all the way to the pinky side, get the weight going all the way over the big to the thumb side. Then when you stress it back into a dog, then you lunge the foot on the hand. Beautiful. Once you lunge the foot on the hand, you got to have it. Right. Yeah. Push the back foot, right. the elbow to the shoulder, then the front uh, elbow, right, and then take the other arm up. Then rather than thinking that the arm is going to push your leg back, make your knee push your arm forwards. Then turn your arm to two. Right. All the little detail, right? Because honestly, you want anything, you do everything. Right? And that's the big joke in life. That's when people say, this will fix you, that will fix you. It's not true. Mm -hmm. The only thing you really want to do is be organized yourself. And as you do, you organize one thing, 10 things we organize. Because like a jigsaw puzzle. You put one thing in the right place, 10 other things start to figure out that they go. That's where it goes. Knee pushes arm, not arm push knee. Even more may, knee pushes arm. Knee pushes arm. Beautiful. And how do you bring it down? Right, top arm goes down, right back foot flips, front foot goes back, flip the hand back, and back and go. Okay, last one. Okay. The pose in the plank of 90 flip both hands. Because no one can wait. Right. Ah, I guess when you have two feet. So, one foot on each hand. And if you really want to work yourself, you jump. <laughs> or you walk, or you do anything. Right. Then bend your elbows and push out. Then know where your heart's going. Know where your knees go. Oh, isn't that the best? It's the only clue I can give him that he doesn't know. <laughs> Right, so I always have to figure out, what doesn't somebody know? Because everything you know is one of my business. If you didn't know how to get there, I'm not going to tell you. Right, because you already know. If I see clue that you don't know something that'll get you to get there faster, that's me. Right, so that looks like say nothing, you're probably doing it well. <laughs> right, so you know, it's a tough thing when you're good and nobody says anything anymore. Push the elbows out, push the elbows out, push the elbows out. Know that they're on set two. Know that both knees are driving you to your future. That's the middle. Now you go up and down. The big trick when you go up and down is don't let your arms leave your legs. So you only get to go as far up as somebody's your arms hold on to your legs. Beautiful. Right? That's it. Well, if this doesn't lubricate your joints, if this doesn't make the window sills open, right? Like don't you came to for you. Right? It does the trick. Beautiful. Right. Ah, turn, turn, turn. Right. And that hand, so that little detail, move your butt, or move your eye, and let you look at it. Because everything you see is true, but so what? I mean, you don't see is true, too. So the trick is not, is it true? It's what are you looking at? 
right? And that's what it's all it's about. It's like there's so many truths in the world. What are you looking at? Look at the one that you should be, which is the one that will get you to your goal. And he's looking at two, heart looks at two, liver looks at ten, and you look straight ahead. Totally different. Beautiful. Bring it up. Make your feet parallel. Now your hands should feel like they've just been cooked. So bend your knees slightly and your hands underneath your feet. I remember we did this before and I told you once you're into really hot like fire, we'll put them under water. Right? Now you use your toes to where you lose. So I really like that little sequence because it plays out so much stuff. Like you play with roots, you play with branches, you play with fruition, you play with water, you play with fire, you play with currency. You play with knowing that hands are gonna hold the heat, feet are gonna hold the water, and if you put your hands under the feet, you can take a lot of heat out of your hands. And, oh yes, and if you fall over, that's actually very impressive. <laughs> Not that we want you to, but it's very impressive. Because it really means you're playing battles and battles with very precarious. Absolutely. Take your hands out, bring your feet together one more time. One last time, bring your hands behind your heels with your hands in that tennis racket position. Then stand on your hands, right? So when you stand on it, you turn your palms down. Right, with both feet on the right, so now you stand all the way so that your hands are in the arches of the feet, so you're like in a high heel shoe. Right, and now when you fold knees together, knees pointing to two, that's the middle. Okay, now you're so compact, right? Absolutely beautiful. Okay, and this is what it's about. Can you be teeny tiny compact? Because when you need to protect yourself, you know that makes yourself compact. When you need to expose yourself, you know that makes yourself fierce. Right? This pose is not to make you fierce, it is to make you fit and be very compact. So you know this is the shoe that fits the foot of your body. Right? Now the ones who know this, they want to show, right? So Megan's going to show you how to like, flip the whole game. Right? So now she can get all the way down, she can get all the way through, bend those knees, and she can bring it all the way up. So start there now, and bring it down. So she bends, she bends, she bends. She puts her hands under her knees. By standing on them, right? She can fold down, she can stand up, she can lift her heels up, she can now wrap around her ass. <laughs> okay, wow, that was good. Right? Then she can wrap it around and come in. That's how your heart beats. The circulatory system should never break circuit. Beginning yoga is right? So you do a pose, put it away. You do a pose, put it away. Right? Advanced yoga is script. Never take your hand off the page. Beginning Tai Chi is rigid, right? But advanced Tai Chi is Tai Chi, you dance it. And that's why you have to know the fluency is so that eventually, you're not a beginner, right? Beginners are printing, it is rigid, but eventually it's fluent. The real fluency is that your heart doesn't break circuit, right? Ah, you know the look again. It's a rotation in the thighs. Right. It's, it's a trick. It's eventually you have to, it's every little inch. So when you get this web right, and you know, because every single piece, okay, so now as you're coming up, bend, right, bend your knees, get your arms out from underneath you, from under. So when you turn, the big thing is don't lose the pinky side of the hand. Don't lose the pinky side of the hand. Okay, so. so <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Eventually the joints will rotate because honestly, you're designed to pick yourself. You're designed to get over yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the, size, the size of your derriere design. No, because the size of your derriere is really designed to be acting the size of your head. Just like, you know, the size of your brain? The size of your two fists together. <laughs> Right? And your hands is the size of two hands together. So actually, you're designing a cannon. You might have a big ass for somebody else, but you have a big ass for your proportions. If it's not proportion, you're using yourself wrong. You're building up certain joints too much, you're building up certain joints too little. And that's why it's not a judgment, just like the shoe really is designed to fit. Your mouth is designed to fit your, your tongue is designed to fit your mouth. Your hands is designed to fit your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's all go. <laughs> because now we're going to teach you a moon salutation. Right? So you have one minute to close your okay. eyes. I'm not going to keep that many minutes. Well, well, we have, we have time, so I'm trying to really afford it. We can do it later, so. Okay, we'll probably do both. <laughs> Let me show you what a moon salutation is, because a lot of you don't know it. So I'm going to show it to you once, and I can push you through it. A moon is where a sun salutation is about heat. And when you play sun citation, you're going to generate a lot of heat. 
He gives her a son, and that's what it's all about. It's good the vibrancy of the sun. But a moon salutation is about the ebb and flow of water and the tide of the moon. So it does not have the same heat gain as the sun. It is about water, it is about the magnetic pull, and it's about the ebb and flow. So a moon salutation takes 14 steps, sun salutation takes 10. Right? So I'm just going to show it really quickly because you're going to do it. Right? But I don't want you to guess at the beginning until we can do it. A moon salutation always starts with you being a seed, right? Because the moon manipulates the tide, it manipulates the fertility, and it's all about the sprout, it's about growing, and it's about really the magnetic pull of the moon, which pulls things in and out. So the moon salutation starts as a teeny tiny seed. So it's very similar to child's pose, but the eyeballs are really in the kneecaps, and the hands are really around the feet, and ideally they're all wet because you are a seed, you're compact, and all the energy and information is encased in that. So you start in the seat. One is when you come up, you see the moon. Two is when you come down, you find the land. Three is when you come through and you find the tide. Four is when you pull back and you find the land. Because remember, you're just ebbing and flowing. Five is when you come forwards and you find the crescent. So it's the crescent moon. Six is when you find sort of the stem, you and your integrity. And then seven is always the moon. Once you're coming up in the, uh, in the night, in the moon, then eight, the moon starts to set. Nine, right, you find the crescent, right? Ten, you put it back on the moon. Eleven, you move it to the tide. I skip that uh, network. Twelve, you bring it back, right? And then eventually, it's really fourteen. It'd be better than easy, okay? So, one is up, two is down, three is through, four is land, five is um, yeah. Crescent, right? Six is the pullback, right? Seven is, be, uh, seven is the height, not eight is the descent, nine is the crescent. So I'll bring you through, but you're going to really see it's just an ebb and flow. This pose takes, um, this practice, this form is going to take seven minutes because it's a piece of music that is designed for seven minutes, right? So I think seven because I know it's a 14 game, seven is the virgin, the virtue of the moon, right? Because People are only alive, really, because of the lunacy of the moon magnetic pull of the moon. So the moon is a full moon, those are how many people are making babies. You are not alive because people are being scholastic and solar. You are alive because people are lunatics. You have to know that one piece of you is a lunatic. Right? So you have to learn the lunacy that you're being pulled back and forth, and that you know the temptations is keep going, and I have to pull you back into the sea. Right? So it's a great citation because it does not build up heat. It will take a lot of heat out because it's warm. It's all warm. So it's a very different game. You don't play it like the sun citation. You don't play it aggressively because you want someone to fall asleep. You don't play heavy metal. But you want to wake up, you play the heavy metal. And then you have to know why you do what. And then you have options. So everybody put themselves so that they can be asleep. So at the very back of your mat. Enough other lunatics in the world, right? Enough other fertility happening that you don't have to worry about your seed. <laughs> so, first, just be a seed. Remember that the breath is the ebb and flow of the tide, and the sound of the kidneys, which are your waters, like the ocean, the sound of the breath. So, be incredibly tidal. Beautiful. Let the tide move in, let the tide move out, and just keep following your breath and just stay in the seed. the tip of the tongue in the center of the upper palate, so you can find the center of the palate as well as the center of your being. If you don't know where the center of the palate is in your mind, say the word love, say the word life, say the word lovely, and wherever the L touches, that is a good center. Right? Everything around is circumstantial, so be radiant and smile away. Remember you in the center and the circumference. Anytime you're ready, now on a new breath, start to rise up and shake the moon. On that breath, down and find the moon. On an in-breath, come through and be away from the ocean by finding an upward facing When you exhale, wave yourself back and find a shore and down the facing dog. Remember, as you pose, it's a in itself. You can just breathe and sleep. Anytime you're ready, take an in-breath, run your right foot forward, bend the back and down, and find the crescent. And it's really nice to do it all night bed because it is moon. So actually, you're really holding the moon. When you exhale, bring the hands down, pick up the back foot, bring the back foot forward, hold the hand. So now you're a sprout, and you're going to start to rise. So now inhale, rise, 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 until you 
that Richard, uh, I don't know the moment of Richard is at the moment. There's the spring of spring, the summer of spring, the autumn of spring, the winter of spring. So eventually, every moment is every other moment in it. You just have to manage the vibe of the gap. Yeah. So inhale, yeah, it's been right. Hold your breath and stuff like that. And so you're all the wrong. So I'm talking you through it. You're all in that zone. Inhale, spring is wide. Hold your breath, summer is ripening.
many people in this room, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to cook you to the point that when you leave, you'll pass out. Right? And that's why you don't do sun salutations right? in the heat of the summer. You do moon salutations. Right? But in the depth of winter, I do a lot of sun salutations. Right? So the winter solstice and the summer solstice. The greater the external darkness, the greater the internal light. Right? The winter solstice. The greater the external light, the stupid one the inside. <laughs> right? right? And that is a midsummer's night's dream. Yeah, in the seasons. <laughs> right, beautiful people. So give it a moment, and then when you pat it, you can either lie down, or you can just like. Thank you. 